Hello, 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 wherever you are on our stupendous planet called Earth, I hope you are having a entertaining time wherever you are located this day, evening, or night. My topic says it all. So you know, if I'm talking about angels, this is a Bible-related topic. Bible-related. Angels, we've heard people talk about them since, well, regardless of the society you're in. I believe everybody talk about angels, whether you are Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Christian, etc. And all those types of religion, sex, there is some type of spiritual entity that may guard over the poor, pathetic human being. But here's the clue. Just like you. I've searched YouTube before and talked uh, and heard discussions about angels. But the primary thing they discuss is angels being messengers of God. And that's it. That's it. As you can see here, I want to talk about what they could do. What powers do they have? And I have many years of reading comic books. So I'm fluent on knowing about powers and abilities. But angels, they have powers and abilities. Like, like some of the, uh, the classifications on this front first slide show. They're able to shape shift in abilities. They have fire control abilities. They, have, they definitely have superhuman level strength. They have some form of telepathy. They have... Elemental control, whether they, and, and here's my point, whether they are a, a demon or an angel, because before you became, before it became a demon, it was an angel, right or wrong. Demons were former angels, and God, he don't call them demons in the Bible, he still call them angels. They have telekinesis, they have endurance. And they have flight. How many YouTube channels have you ever heard talking about what can an angel do? What can they do? That's what we're going to find out using the Bible. So, let's the journey begin. This is coming from Psalms 103, 103 verse 19 to 22. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Which is true. And his kingdom rules over all. Which is also true. Praise the Lord. You his angels. Okay there's one thing they do. The angels. They praise God. And they say here's the, here's the, the next thing. You mighty ones. Who do his bidding. It said they are mighty. It didn't just say they strong. It didn't say they, just, they have endurance. And it definitely didn't say they weak. It said angels are mighty. As we will learn further in this lesson. And before they became fallen angels, they obey his word as the Bible show. Even the demons obey his word. Because when he said, get out that person, they get out. When a demon, he said, go to Ahab, the demon went to Tim Ahab. So the demons still listen to him. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. They mighty and they do the will of God. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. So, see, they are mighty and they were meant to praise and serve God. As the Bible show, definitely in the book of Revelations, we see them praising God continuously. This is coming from Psalm chapter 8, verse 5. I've heard this a lot, but nobody ever clarified what it means. I'm going to give an example. You have made him a little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. Now watch this. A chimp is a little lower than a human being. 
but it's vastly different. Look right here. A chimp or apes sharing approximately 99% of our DNA. So they're real close to us. They share 99% of our DNA. With gorillas trailing at 98%. The gorilla just 1% behind, but it's still 98%. Realistically, they are a little lower in it than us. But think of that nine, that one percent, that two percent difference is huge. It's vast. We got a movable thumb. I think chimps have a movable thumb. We form societies. I think chimps f form societies, but they don't form societies with a thousand people in it. No, no, no. They may just have twenty or thirty chimps. The chimp and the gorilla, they have never made a will. Now, they throw rocks and sticks. They'll do that quick in a heartbeat. But they never made an invention. They're just a little lower than us. So, even though many pastors and ministers and gurus say they are, we're a little bit lower than an angel, that little bit lower could be a vast difference when you're standing beside that angel. That angel can do things that you could never dream of doing. But you're still a little bit lower. And this is why it's a little bit lower. Because chimps, they do communicate with each other. Like humans communicate with each other. They do mate and produce offspring like human beings. We mate and produce offsprings. We do protect our wounded. Chips and apes, they protect their wounded. We humans, we do grieve when members of our immediate family or friends die. That's like chimps and monkeys. They have a level of emotions. So that's how they're similar to humans. We are similar to angels because angels have intellect. We have intellect. We can talk and angels can talk. You get the idea how we're similar. That's why I said we're a little lower. But they still have vast things that we cannot do. So it may be a big gap. A gigantic gap. And also chimps and apes can talk too to each other. Like humans can talk. But the difference is vast. I never saw a chimp put on uh, a bathing suit. I never saw a chimp put on shoes. You all get the idea. That little difference, a little lower, it can be a vast difference. Which the scriptures will show. This is coming from Genesis chapter 24. I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. After he expelled the man, the Lord God placed winged angels at the eastern end of the Garden of Eden. Here's the first time, my good people, where we see the word wings with an angel. Nowhere else in the Bible that I know of, and I have read it many times over, this is the first time that I can actually call the word winged. So when we see the winged angels, it probably was taken from Genesis chapter 3. At the east end of the garden, along with fiery turning sword to prevent access to the tree of life. So you see their weapons. A fiery sword, like a lightsaber. That's what George Lucas probably got the idea from, of a lightsaber. A fiery Sword and a lightsaber in Star Wars is a fiery sword that cut through anything. We see right there, my good people, the difference between the human and the angel. What human has a sword that's made of fire? So we already see right there, they have a higher level intelligence to make a sword of fire. We can put an electrical current through a sword with a battery attached to it. And it'll make the sword even heavier. To give a powerful vote off. But their sword was made of fire. Energy. It didn't say it was made of solid metal or steel. So we see right there. They probably have a higher level of technology than we do. Let's continue. This is Genesis chapter 19, verse 11. 
Then they struck the men who were at the door of the house, young and old, with blindness, so that they could not find the door. So we see right here, good people, the angels had a level of telekinesis, and they could manipulate the human DNA. They could manipulate the human organism. Not one person, no. They made 50, if I was 50 or more, uh, it was the whole town. And Solomon Gomorrah said that all the men came out to rape those angels. And you see right here, look at that power level. If you can make a person blind, that's a huge amount of power. It said they made them all blind. What human can do that? But you must see, they say we're a little bit lower. So they have the power to make them blind. And they wasn't even looking at the people face to face. They was behind the door. So they had powers that range. It was no range limit to it. They said, you all go blind and snap a finger and everybody was blind. That's their power level. They can manipulate organic matter from a scientific point of view. This is Exodus chapter 23, verse 20. See, now this is God talking. This is coming from God's mouth. Not Moses, not Miriam, not Aaron. It's coming from God himself. See, I am sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way and to bring you to the place I have prepared. And that angel was that pillar of fire. God wasn't in the pillar of fire. It was the angel. So right there. Angels have the ability to shape shift into anything they want. To any element or person they want to. They have the ability to change their shape in this physical world. And the fire was actual hot burning fire. You stick your hand in there. You burn your hand off. It was that type of fire. They give off a huge amount of light. And there wasn't no... F and when it was that pillar, it said a pillar. Now we see them ancient structures in Rome and Greece, how a pillar look. They're over 20 feet tall. Or they're about, they're about uh, over 10 meters tall. A pillar. So that thing probably was like 50 feet or more. 30 meters or more tall. There we go. It can shape shift. Or they can shape shift. And still retain their intelligence. Because the pillar was moving. Like in the movie Ten Commandments. You know the pillar was moving around. Because he said I'm going to send it ahead of you to guard you. The pillar had to move to guard them. So when the people move. The pillar moved. This is Exodus. Chapter 13. Verse 19. Then the angel of God who was going before the host of Israel moved and went behind them. See the pillar is moving. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them. Coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was the cloud and darkness. And it lit up the sky. It was bright. Without one coming near, without one coming near the other all night. So that angel and that pillar of fire made a gulf. So that was a large pillar of fire if it blocked the Egyptian army. And width, it probably was like a uh, hundred meters, a hundred feet, thirty meters or more. They have vast shape shifting. Power. It was. They don't sit. They can turn to a soda can if they want to. They can turn to a beer, bo beer bottle if they want to. But I'm just demonstrating here. It was a large elemental plasma like shape. Fire. And a cloud. Because they said uh, it can change to a fire and it changed the cloud. During the, during the night, it was fire. During the day, it was a cloud. 
So they have rapid shape shifting abilities too. And there was no struggle for it to do that. This is Kings chapter 19 verse 35. That night the angel of the Lord went out and put to death a hundred and eighty-five thousand in the Assyrian camp. When the people got up the next morning, there were all the dead bodies. So we see right here, it killed the men all night long. It has fantastic endurance. A human being... When they fighting someone, we're going to get tired five or ten minutes later. All of our energy is gone. You see mixed martial arts. You see boxing and basketball and American football and international football. When they keep running, when they keep exerting themselves, hey, they, got, they get tired and have to take a break. This angel endurance was so phenomenal. It was fighting all night long. And usually... When you got great endurance, you're going to have a, a massive level of strength and healing to go with that endurance ability. It was strong enough, and you know they was trained fighters. Trained fighters. So its strength level was superior to a human being's strength level. To cut them people, to stab them people all night long. It had endurance, it had strength, and it had tenacity. You see that? Endurance, tenacity, strength. And in Second Kings, that was the ability of that angel. And it probably and it said, and it said that that night, so it can see in the dark. And you know, good people. Back in them biblical times, they didn't have no street lamps located every 10 meters apart. Every 20 feet apart, we got a street lamp here in the city. If you've been in the country, like I had when I was a child, it's pitch black. Even if you got a torch, the torch only going to light up so much. So that angel had enchanted senses to see in the dark. But nobody ever said that about the angel's abilities. It was able to see in the dark and kill those men. It said over a hundred thousand. How much power do you got to be able to do that? All night long you're killing people. A hundred thousand of them. Let's go on. This coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 14. And no wonder for Satan himself Masquerade as an angel of light. See, they have illuminosity. It says Satan, who is the devil, he he can he transform himself. He manipulate his shape. He transform his body into an angel of light to fool you. There we go. They shape shifters, and they commit off. Light from that body. And we've seen that in the Bible many times. The angels, sometimes when they come to earth, they be emitting light from their bodies. They be emitting energy from their body. Okay. So, let's continue on. This coming from Job chapter 1. One of the most well-known chapters in the Bible. Satan replied, Will Job worship you if he got nothing out of it? You have always protected him with his angels and his family and everything he owns. So God put a bubble around him. You bless everything he does and you have given him enough cattle to fill the whole country. Wow. So he was, in the, the day's time, he probably was a billionaire. In today's talk, Job would have been a billionaire in a Western world standard. But now, suppose you take away everything he has. He will curse you to your face. That was the role of the accuser. All right, the Lord said to Satan, everything he has is in your power. But you must not hurt himself. So Satan left. The point here is, because you see, 
angels. They are highly skilled, persuasive entities. They're not just yes boys. God say do this and they just say, okay, go ahead. God will talk to the angels and explain why we're going to do this. He gets into conversation with those angels. They're not yes men. They're not just praising and praising for nothing. He will talk to the angels and the angels talk to God. Whether they angels or demons. Because they still in God's eye are angels but they just fell. So he will talk to them and entertain them and listen to what they got to say. That's beautiful right there. Let's show you how much God loves his creation. That's right beautiful. He loves his creation. That he will actually talk to them. But let's show you angels are intelligent. A high level in intellect and persuasive abilities. Again, they're still coming from Job chapter 1. One day, when Job's children were having a feast at the home of their oldest brothers, how loving and how that beautiful that was. They're at the oldest brother house. Elder respect, which, which the Western world does not have anymore. A messenger came running to Job. We were plowing the fields with the oxen, he said, and the donkeys were in a nearby pasture. Suddenly, the Sabians attacked and stole them all. They killed every one of your servants except me. I am the only one who escaped to tell. What's their power, people? Telepathy. Telepathy. Because they controlled the Sabians and said, go over there and kill them people. And they didn't say no one. He said Sabians. Not one Sabian. Sabi they had mass telepathic abilities to influence those Sabians to go over there and kill or take whatever they want to. The power of telepathy, which the angels have. They influence the human mind. They persuaded the humans to do something. Continuing on. Before he had finished speaking, another servant came and said, Light and struck the sheep and the shepherds and killed them all. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. You see, the demons, they said, we got to let one of them live to tell Job what happened. We're going to let, we gonna let uh, Nathaniel live. Go, Nathaniel, and tell Job what, what we, we, we came in the form of a lightning bolt. The power to control the earth. <laughs> they can do that. The power to control the elements. Earth, fire, wind, rain, I mean, water. They can control that. They made lightning come down from the sky and kill everything in its path. And you know, good people, a lightning bolt come up from the sky. That thing had to travel at least one mile from the sky and travel one mile to the earth to kill whatever. It was no little uh, fake scientific, the scientific lightning that's made in the lab. The lab only about uh, 10 centimeters. You know, in that orb that give off lightning bolts, it's only 10 centimeter bolts. No. The angel, the demons, had the power to control the lightning where they made it come from the actual sky two miles up and come all the way down and kill them. They were able to direct the lightning bolt with pinpoint accuracy. Continue to verse 17. Before he had finished speaking, another servant came and said, Three bands of Chaldeans raised attacked us. Again, telepathy. They influenced the humans to do something that they usually would not do. They took away the camels and killed all your servants and something. They have such great power of telepathy and mind control that they made them take whatever they want and kill everybody. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. And when they had that telepathy, they said, we're going to let one of them live. In this case, we're going to let Dwayne live. Or we're going to let uh, Akeisha live and go back and tell you what happened. Let Akeisha live and she go back and tell you what happened. In, chat, in verse 18, before he had finished speaking, another servant came and said, Your children were having a feast at the home of your oldest son. It said that in the beginning. When a storm, an element, wind, wind, 
fire rain. When a storm swept in from the desert, and they made the storm travel from the de desert, the storm traveled a great distance. It blew the house down. It had hurricane-level winds and killed them all. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. So we see right here, good people. The angels have the power of telepathy, mind control. They had the, the power to control the elements, the lightning. They had the power to control the elements again, a wind storm. But you remember, they say humans are a little bit lower than the angels. Remember, humans compared to ape. The ape has 99%. The gorilla, 98% of human DNA. That 1% or 2% is a big difference. It's massive. What human being can make a lightning come from the sky? What human being can control another human being's mind? We probably can persuade one or maybe two people to do something for us. We can persuade one or two, but we're not going to persuade no 50 people to do our bidding. Tell me that. We cannot persuade no, you, Or you have to be a massive leader. You already have to be a person of great power to do that. And these people here, they were just ordinary people. They, they were, there was no president. There was no official. They can control mass amounts of people. And even then, they may have malcontents in their organization who may stab them in the back when the leader not looking at them. The angels have a masterful telepathy. They can control you and you can't do nothing about it. They can persuade you because that's what telepathy is. When they do, it's just a mint mind persuasion, a little push to do something. And they control those elements, the lightning bolt, and, it, and, it, and when the lightning bolt struck, it did not say it was raining. It did not say it was raining. It did not say it was windy. It just said the, the lightning bolt bolt from the sky and killed the sheep and all of them. Look at that power level, massive power levels that the angels. Have and when I say angels too, I'm also talking about those demons. This is coming from Matthew chapter 22, verse 30. At the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage, they will be like the angels in heaven. So, don't no one go around telling me that in the book of Genesis, the sons of God were angels and they had sex with a woman, they didn't, and I can give you a reason why. Except for some weird Europeans who like to have sex with animals. Most people of color, we don't go messing with no animals. Tell me this. Does a human being, typical human being, does they crave to have sex with an ape? Does the typical human being, who don't have no depravity in them, have the desire to have sex with an orangutan? Does... A typical human being who lacks depravity and a carnal nature, do they desire to have sex with a chimpanzee? No, they do not. And the angels, even though we're close to them, we're similar, do a higher life form want to come down from heaven and have sex with a lower life form? Tell me that. Do they want to do that? Would you do it? Would you come down from the city, from your house, go in the woods and find a monkey and have sex with it? So don't tell me that the sons of God were angels. God even called humans the sons of God. The sons of God saw women were beautiful and had children with them. Higher life forms like humans, do not want to go have a sex with a dog, an ape, a fish, a giraffe, a lion. We don't. So those angels, they hire. And they said the angels don't even get married. So they're not even thinking about having sex. They're not even thinking about lusting after a human being who's lower than them. And the angels in the Bible, they seem that way too. They may talk to humans, but they didn't play games with them. Like that angel... Who blinded Zacharias? He said, you don't believe me, huh? 
I'm a blind. Oh, I'm gonna make you deaf. I'm sorry, he didn't blind him. He said, I'm gonna make you deaf until your son is born. Angels in the Bible do not play with human beings. They do not play with men and they do not play with women. They give an order and you don't do it. They have quick, serious repercussions. I never saw one of the angels talk and say, that's a beautiful lady. I never saw it. Angels don't have sex in heaven and they don't, from the Bible, worry about having sex with a lower level human being. Let's go on. This is Luke chapter 15, verse 10. And the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. As I stated earlier, angels have a high level of intelligence. They get happy when sinful humans turn around and worship the God of heavens and earth. Because you remember the angels, they have a high relation. They have a better relationship with God. They know what God truly is like. They see him in his fullness. We just see God through a muddy mirror. Like Paul said, it's just a shadow. That's all we see of God. Just a foggy image, a foggy shadow of God. They see him in his fullness. So they're happy when human beings turn around, stop following the fallen angels, stop following the fallen angels and join the heavenly host in praising and worshiping the God of the universe. Now, this is coming from Psalms chapter 104, verse 4. Who make up his angel spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. Angels can shape shape up their normal habitat as spirits. But then he say, when they ministers, they are flaming fire. And no one ever said this. No one ever said this. Remember in the book of Acts? When them fiery tongues came down? Who was to say those wasn't the angels who was with the apostles or the people now? The angels, they sent here to minister to us. The angels was with them all along the way. Them flaming tongues could have been God's heavenly angels to inhabit human beings to be with human beings to give them wisdom and knowledge and strength and power. But we see they can shape shift their spirit one moment and fire the next. Look coming from Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 to 14. How you have fallen from heaven morning star son of the dawn. It compare him as a morning star. A star is a bright celestial object. It's fiery. It gives up great illuminance. Great brilliance. That's what he was. He's called the morning star. So he had to be brilliant. He had to be some type of fire manipulator. You have been cast down to the earth. You who once laid low the nations. See, it didn't say nations. It did not say nations. It did not say one nation. He said you have laid down the nations. Vast superhuman level strength and doors. One angel can destroy a nation. That would have said. You have laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. So he had a throne. He had a throne. But it wasn't as high as God's throne. But he had a throne with other angels around him. He had a throne. But he said, I'm going to make my throne of higher than God's. He said, I'm not going to make my throne equal with God. No, he said, I'm going to make myself above God. I will sit and throne on a mount of assembly. The Mount of Assembly where all the heavenly hosts come to talk to God, meet the God, tell him what's going on. On the utmost heights of Mount Zephron, I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. He didn't hate God. See, we usually think Satan hate God. Satan did not hate God. He said, I just want to be like God. And God said, you, you can't be like me because I'm the creator. He said, I want to be like you, God. I want to sit 
high above like you. But keep that in mind. He had great power. He was a concord a morning star. He laid waste the nations with his vast strength, endurance, and tenacity. But you remember, human beings are a little bit lower. No human being, from what I know, has ever been called a morning star. No human being have laid low the nations by himself. Yeah, you can lay low. Humans, we have laid low the nations, but we had an army behind us. Here, it's talking about one entity laying low the nations. Not no army of people. Not 50 or 1,000. No, one creature has laid low the nations with a superior strength, a superior endurance, and his superior fighting skills. I never said that before. If you can fight an army, if you can lay low a nation, you better have some expert level fighting warrior skills. And angels, they are warriors because they can fight. This is coming from Revelations chapter 5, verse 1 through 11. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands. And 10,000 times 10,000. So that's like billions of them. So it's not no 50. It's not no 100. It's not no th- It's 10,000 times 10,000. I should get my calculator and do that. But let me get my calculator and say 10,000 times 10. If I can find it. No, it's downstairs. So I can't. I have to do that. I can't get my calculator. 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. So here we go, people. In heaven, they are angels, they are living creatures, and they are elders around God's throne. Three types of entities. In a loud voice, they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and, oh my God, they said, power. Power. They ain't say what type of power. Cosmic level power. Earthly level power. He's worthy to receive Every power, celestial power and earthly power. And wealth. All the wealth of the planet, all the wealth of creation is his. And wisdom. Good. He will not abuse his power because he has wisdom. And strength. Okay. What kind of strength? Physical strength? Mental strength? Moral strength? And honor and glory and praise. Honor. He keep his word. He don't like to go tell lies. Glory. He do mighty acts. He do good things. And praise. He do so many good things. He's so glorified that we have to praise him. You have to praise a creature like that. This is coming from Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. All not angel ministering spirits. See, I said that earlier. They hear, they come to help the lower level human beings who will one day exceed them in the resurrection. When we get resurrected, then we will be a higher life form because we will have God actual power in us then. Not angel level power, no. Power of God to manipulate matter, energy, like Jesus did. I mean, do a report on that. When Jesus was resurrected, he was able to do many things. He had telepathy because the those disciples didn't recognize him. Even Jesus had telepathy. He was standing there. They did not know who he was. So he was manipulating their mind. Sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. So they greater creatures, but they, they know what we have the potential of coming. They know that we fought sin because the angels, they never sinned. Most of them, except for the demons, when the angels sin, that's it. When the angels sin, you lock. You fix. Done. There's no repenting for you because you saw God. Human beings, one benefit we have, we can repent because we never saw God. We didn't see God. So we can repent and change. But an angel, when they sin, is done. You can't change no more. You locked in that shape. You locked. So that's why angels are here to help us. They're here to help us to become more and more godly. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2. 
Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing so, some people have shown the hospitality to our angels without knowing it. Once more, they don't have to. They can shapeshift again. And when they shapeshift, they can actually look like the human being. They don't, have to, they don't have to radiate no energy off of them. They don't have to give off no light. Now, if they wouldn't have been in that natural form, that's the form that give off light. But when they shape shift to a human, they look like an actual flesh and blood human. You can touch them. You can feel them. They eat. But they can shape shift. This is coming from Luke chapter 1. Zechariah said to the angel, What proof is there for this? I am an old man, and my wife is beyond her childbearing years. The angel answered him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. God sent me to tell you this good news. But because you didn't believe what I said, you will be unable to talk until the day this happens. Everything will come to you at that right time. You see right there. Telepathy. Telekinesis. And it's permanent telekinesis. When the angel left, he still could not talk. In comic books, which I read, when it was a telekinetic, you had to be right there. When you leave, that was it. Unless you unless you change the you know the matter, the shape of it. The angel said, I have such power, I'm gonna stop you from talking. Done. When your son is born, that's the switch to make you start talking again. You see that power level right there? The power to control organic matter and that vocal cord mechanism. Acts chapter 12. What can the angel do? We shall see. That night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Wow. He not going anywhere. Bound with two chains on his hands, on his foot, allegedly. And sentry stood guard at the entrance. Wow, he was a heavy prisoner. Suddenly, boom! It transported him right there. It didn't say it took a little walk down the street. It didn't say to open the gate. It said suddenly, in a snap of a finger, it teleported. I didn't put that there. It can teleport, too. It teleported. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. Okay, so it coming in its heavenly brilliance. See, from his body, light was coming off. Light shone in the cell. It filled the whole cell with its radiance. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. See, it could actually touch him. It was physical. Quickly get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrist. The angel didn't even tell us the chains that fell off. It just made it just thought and the chains fell off. That was telekinetic. So we see the power level. It teleported. Boom! Something appeared in the cell. It radiated energy, that light, and the tele tele telekinetic power. It made the chains fell off instantly. It said chains leave Peter. And it dropped to the floor or to the ground or wherever. You see the power of the angels. Humans are a little bit lower than them. But that little bit lower is a wide, vast gulf. No human can suddenly appear in another realm. If they can, you let me know. No, ain't, no human have light pouring from its body. Not one. No angel can tell an inanimate an, an object, move here, move there. We cannot do it. So you see, the gulf is vast. Right now, we're just a little lower than them. Like the chimp is a little lower than a human. But the gulf is still massive. This again, this is Acts chapter 12. Then the angel said to Peter, put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gates leading to the city. Here's the power of the angel. It was guards all around Peter. One to the left, one to the right. They trained soldiers. If Peter was shuffling heavily, they were woke up. The angel used its power of telepathy 
or mental persuasion to keep the guards sleeping. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gates to the city. It kept the guards immobile. Not just it didn't just affect inanimate objects, it affect living organic humans. It kept them asleep. It okay. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. Here's the iron gate of the city. It opened for them by itself. There we go again. The angel with his, teleneg with his telekinetic powers, his power to manipulate physical objects without even touching it, made the gate open by itself. And they went through it. When they had walked the length of the run street, suddenly, again, the angel left him. Boom! And a snap of a finger, it teleported out of his sight. It didn't say the angel flew up to the heavens. It didn't say the angel descended into the earth. It didn't say the angel walked away. And said, goodbye, Peter. Have a good night. And said, it suddenly snapped away. Tell to put it away. That's the power of that angels. Or angels. And we don't even know what level angel it was. Because it's different levels of angels. Like Gabriel said, I stand in the presence of gods. Now, angels, they do come around God to praise him. But some angels, like those elders. And those living creatures. They actually in God's presence all the time. Some angels like Gabriel, they're in God's presence all the time. This Acts 16. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Wonderful. And the other persons were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison was shaken. Something's making the earthquake. You remember before how Satan was able to control the elements? They can control the earth and the ground too. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came off. Whether it was typical prisoners or the saints of God, the chains came off. The jealous woke up and when he saw the prison's door open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. How wonderful. When, when, when that angel or that heavenly force shook the ground and made the gates go open, Paul told everyone, saint, criminals, or whoever was in that prison, don't leave. We will not let these men kill themselves. All right. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. I read this, but I'm going to read it again. Are not all angels, ministers, and spirits sent to serve those who inherit salvation? I went over it, so I'm not going to go over it again. This is Revelation chapter 10, verse 1. Then I saw another mighty angel. See, mighty indeed. Mighty in power. Coming down from heaven. He was robed in a cloud. Said he riding on a cloud. <laughs> How many human beings can ride on a cloud? So they have access to advanced technology. They smart enough. With a rainbow above his head. How many humans can have a rainbow above their head? How many of us? They hide in us. His face was like the sun. Okay, his face is shining like the sun. It given, you can't even look at his face because it's so bright. Giving off energy. And his legs were like fiery pillars. His legs burning up. Because his face is like the sun. So his body is burning like the sun. You see that? Humans just a little bit lower. No human being have a face like the sun. No human have fiery legs. None of us have that. And that's it, my good people. I know, like I said, I never saw it before. Nobody ever talked about what an angel can do. I never saw that. Heavenly Father, thank you for this lesson. For letting your children know what the heavenly angels can do. How we are a little bit lower than them. But that little bit of lower, being lower, is vast on an eye level. But we know you have sent your servants, the Andrews, to earth to serve and to help those who will inherit eternal life someday. Thank you for the lesson. Thank you for being such a kind God to walk and nourish us every day. Amen. If you like the lesson, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any comments or scriptures that, that I may have missed, because I don't know all the scriptures, I do, I do skip some of them. 
let me know about what angels can do in the comment section. If you'd like to subscribe for further episodes about the living God and the heavenly host, please subscribe. Until the next time, my good people, peace.